Now we're going to move to unmuted. Beautiful, charming next presenter, Melissa Armo. Hello, Melissa. Good day or good evening. Hi, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Great. How how this year started for you? It's been a very good year so far this year, and it's only two weeks into the year. <laughs> So uh, it's, it's hard to believe, but as everyone knows, the market's been very, very bullish. But so far, Tesla has pretty much made everybody, uh, it's a Sox Swish member, has been made our year. So Tesla was a big trade in the last week. Yes, so. you keep talking about Tesla, right? Yeah, You're... I think everyone's talking about Tesla. Uh, can't wait to see your presentation. I made you an organizer that you would be able to see all the questions from the attendees and uh, share your screen with us. Okay. Okay, can everybody see the slide? Uh, looks good to me. Uh, please attend this. Uh, tell Melissa that you're here, that you can see everything properly. I'm gonna get back to you around 11 a.m. PST. Okay, great. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Here it is. Very cold day here in New York and bullish market making brand new all time highs here right as we're speaking. Spy is up and I'm waiting momentarily for the market to break out. Could happen today into the close, could happen and continue tomorrow. So, again, as I was stating, 2020 has been a very bullish year in the market. Now, it's interesting though because I tend to like to look at shorts for the day trade side. And I also do options, and I may do calls or puts in the options. Today we're going to talk about my system, the system that I personally created 12 years ago, which does have great results. So I would say out of every 10 trades that I call, you figure two are going to lose and eight are going to work. There's no system that's 100%. So that's why when I take a trade, I put in a stop. I put in a limit order shot for the day train and for options, basically the stop is the amount that you risk depending on how many contracts you take. If you have any questions, you can type them in the room and I will see them as we go along, okay? And if you have questions afterwards, you can always email me at melissa at thestockswish.com or call me at 929-3200-GAP. And you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. I appear on Fox News and Fox Business Network, so sometimes you will catch me on television. So 2020 is here, okay? And again, two weeks into the year, we are full on into January. Hopefully everyone so far to date is adhering to their New Year's resolutions, whatever they are. And if one of your goals for 2020 is to actually be successful and actually make money in the market and maybe even do this for a career, then it's time to get on board, okay? So whatever you did last year, if you lost money in the market, you need to turn it around. I call it have amnesia. Do whatever you need to do so that you forget about the mistakes that you made in the past. But it is imperative that you do not carry bad habits or bad systems into this calendar year, okay? The only way that you're gonna do uh, something different this year is if you actually change the trading strategy or system that you're using. A lot of times people blame themselves and say, well, I have terrible money management. While it's true that you do need good money management to train, that's kind of like trading 101, okay? You don't need to take a class to understand that you need to have good money management. That's just like the basics, okay? But what I find a lot of people lack is they lack a consistent winning strategy or system to follow on any given day. And I follow and do the same thing pretty much like clock, clockwork every day, okay? And what do I do? I focus on stocks that are gapping. It is something that has big enough momentum, and big enough moves that you could trade as your full-time job if in fact that's what you want to do. But ultimately, no matter what you choose to do, if you want to trade part-time or full-time, you have to make money. Although trading is fun, and I personally love reading charts, um, I love making money more. Okay, so making money, it has to be the goal and the reason why you trade. If you're losing, as fun as it is, it just doesn't make any sense if you're losing money year over year in the market. And any questions, again, you can type them in the room and I'll see them. So trading really is a skill like juggling, playing a musical instrument, playing a sport. A lot of people, even to this day, want to 
buy like a, a, a system and just plug it in and just have it beat one to take a trade and beat one to get out. What I do, I use my mind and I use my brain, which by the way is the best asset that any of you have as well. But you need to cultivate it and you need to learn what to see and, and analyze correctly using your brain. It is a skill. It is a skill set to see price action and predict price action, which is actually called forecasting. So that is what I do. I forecast the direction of a stock by looking at the gap and analyzing it and saying that this is the next direction that it's going to go or the market. Just like I told you right before we started, just like I said two minutes ago, I said the market is at new highs right now. We're going to break out between today and tomorrow in the next 24 hours. Okay, so I just predicted the market direction for you. It is a skill. It's a skill set that I've cultivated over the last 12 years. And it's based on my analysis of gaps. So the market today in the SPY gapped up. And I'm reading that as bullish and that we are going to rally and that we are higher. Okay. And any questions, I'll see them in the room. So it's always a good time to think about this. What are you going to do differently this year than you did last year? If you did not get the results that you wanted in the market last year trading, what are you going to do differently this year? For me personally, I find the amount of time that I prepare in the morning to get ready to trade is the most important time of the day for me. So I prepare, choose what stocks and picks I want to trade, and I look at the market and analyze it in the pre-market in the morning, way before I'm even in anything and way before the market opens. Or if I happen to be in something, then I'm preparing and deciding what I'm going to do with that trade on the day. Am I going? If I'm in an option, am I going to sell it that day or sell it into the open or sell it before the close? Okay, or am I going to leave it on? Again, these are all the things that I look at in my preparation before the market opens. Because in that moment that the market's live, in the hours of the market between 9.30 and 4, you're usually very focused on trades that you're in. I make the decisions what I want to do in the pre-market when I'm all relaxed and I have, you know, time to prepare and time to do the analyzing. And that's what I'm putting, um, taking the knowledge that I have and putting my skills to work. So it's just a good time of the year, still very early in the year, to take good new information, knowledge, and a positive outlook ahead to get the results that you want for this year. And I always tell people this, they come and say, oh, Melissa, you know, don't be afraid to use your brain. It's one of my best assets, okay? If you're not used to using your brain, then get used to using it. Your brain is a muscle. You work it and you work it and work it like when you go to the gym. Sometimes you might want to think so hard that you'll get a headache. But guess what? You get smarter and smarter as time goes on. And that's how you grow. That's how you think more. And you can think through things and solve problems and do them in a low stress environment, which is where you're not under the gun, where your brain is under stress and then you make mistakes. When you train, the only way you're going to make money is by taking risk. Okay? So... That's just, again, trading 101. You're not gonna make any money at all. You're not gonna make any, make any profit unless you take risk. And the more risk you take, again, more share size, more contract size, more quantity, the more money that you can make. If you take 5,000 shares of a stock and you go long it and it rallies a dollar, your profit is what, $5,000, which is a lot more than if you took 500 shares. You may have more stress if you take 5,000 shares because your risk is more. But if you understand why you took the trade, if you have 100% conviction in the trade, if you have the knowledge and the right system, you won't feel stressed about taking the trade. You'll have the conviction. You'll have the full-on understanding, which is one of the reasons why I think it's important for people to understand what they're doing before they take any trades with me. People must take my class in order to join my live trading room. Now, I do offer trials. If you're interested in a trial to the room, you can email me for a trial, okay? But everyone that's in my live room where I'm calling the trades daily, like I called the market today, has done my class, so they have the knowledge, all right? So trading, day trading, or options trading, whichever you want to do, is something you can do from home, and you can also do it from anywhere in the world. Now, why do people find trading so hard? Personally, I think it's because, to be honest with you, there's just an overwhelming amount of information out there. And then people don't know what to follow. They don't know what is right. They don't know what is wrong. They don't know what to be focused on. And so people are all over the place. So 
market also can be very volatile. I don't think it is right now. And I don't think it was for, for the last couple of months. But sometimes we have volatility in the market and that scares people too. But I think it's really the lack of focus and the lack of clarity is the main reason I think why people find trading difficult. For me, I get up in the morning, I rate my gaps, I choose my stock picks, or I don't like anything at all, in which case I don't train. So I'm not looking at 10,000 different things and then you know, flipping back and forth. I also never go long and short the same stock on the same day. That would be zero conviction to me. So I'm very, very focused on what I'm doing. Usually one or two or three ticker symbols per day. And again, only in one direction, whatever that happens to be. So I have conviction in what I'm doing. Or if I don't, I don't do it at all. But people lack focus when they trade. They don't focus on one system. And because there's an overwhelming amount of information out there and people are getting bombarded by emails and things on the internet, I totally get why it gets to be confusing for people. But without the lack of clarity and focus, you're not going to be successful and you're never going to make a lot of money if, in fact, that is your goal. And I mean, if it's not your goal, that's fine. But if it is, you're never going to get there if you don't have the proper focus, okay? For me, I focus on gaps. So let's just look, do a basic uh, review here of what a gap is. So this was last year, 2019, October. This was McDonald's. This was earnings. The stock had an earnings move. Stock closed here the night before. Earnings, boom, gap down. Stock closed at one price up here around 210 and gap down here around 205 and change. This is a gap down. It's a bearish gap. So the stock closed here at 4 and opened at 930. That's what a gap is. Stocks can gap down. Stocks can gap up. Here was a gap up in McDonald's. Rally. Stock closed here, opened at a higher price. So the U.S. market has a close at 4 and an open at 930. Close here at 4, open at 930. So there are bullish gaps and there are bearish gaps. I look at both, okay? Although I prefer to short, if you had to ask me, I prefer to short. And the reason is because selling action happens faster and quicker and more panicky than uh, bullish action. It's rare to find something called panic buying, although I will tell you that is what happened in Tesla in the last week. We had something that was very, very rare. It was an anomaly. It was called panic buying. I talked about that Monday on, on Ameritrade. But most of the time, 99.999% of the time, panic comes in in selling action. And that's what happened here at McDonald's. This was a good short, or you could have done a put. But what I do is I look at the gap, see the gap in the morning to determine if this is a long or a short. And in this case here, McDonald's was short. It's obvious now the day was done, but we were in here early, early, early in the morning. And I can see it usually in the pre-market. And again, any questions, you can write them in the room. So for me, I like to day trade in the first half an hour, in and out quickly, okay, preferably five, 10, 15 minutes in and out. Um, and when you're day trading, there's really no overnight risk because you're flat and out of all your trades before four. Now, if you do options, you have the risk of the contract of the position, which could go in your favor or against you overnight but you have the protection. It's like the insurance where you're not going to lose an endless amount of money. If you take 10 contracts of something and it costs a thousand bucks or a dollar, that's all that you would lose. A thousand bucks. You wouldn't lose any more, even if it goes way against you. That's the maximum amount. Okay. So the way that I look at it is I'm trying to be always in control of my money, setting the risk, putting in the stuff. Okay. And I'm in and I'm out. Just like that, you're chunking it out. That's what trading is. Trading is an investing. <clears throat> you're not buying a stock today and holding it until June of 2020, okay? That would be way different. Now again, you could look at a chart, look at the gaps, predict the directional bias of something by June using my system, but I'm not really taking trades that way because if you wanna make money, you have to book it. The money isn't yours even if you're up until you're out of the trade and it's booked and it's in your account. So this is not passive investing. It's active, active trading where you're in and you're out. And I think that's that's different for some people. Sometimes people, I think, want to hold. They want to take something to buy it and hold it, hold it. That's investing. 
This is active trading. You can make more money trading than actually a long-term active investing because you can take many, many trades, get in and get out, get in and get out. You can turn your money over faster, okay? But people find long-term investing easier because they don't have to watch it every day. I think it's fun to watch stocks in the market every day, okay? But you do have to have an interest in it. And you do have to have an interest in looking at charts because as I said earlier, what I do is based on technical analysis, which is looking at charts. All right. Anyways, if in fact you want to do this for something, for a career, again, break it down. Make it more realistic for yourself, whatever your goal is. If it's $250,000 a year, break it down per month, per week, and per day. It doesn't mean that you're going to make exactly $1,000 per day. Some days you may make 500, some days you may lose, some days you may make 5,000. On average though, you should have an average per week or an average per month. This will help keep you on track and then you back it out to determine your risk. I say usually every day trade, you're looking to turn it over one. So if you risk $2,000 per day trade, your goal is what? Around $2,000 per trade. And again, I try to focus on one trade a day or maybe two. There are different kinds of traders, though. There are options traders and there are day traders. I'm not sure what you prefer. You only need $2,000 to open up an options trading account, and options are not based on margin. You need a minimum of $25,000 to trade on a margin account at a retail account, unless you go to a proprietary day trading account where you can actively day trade on margin. They'll usually give you 10 to 1 margin, and you can open up an account with as little as $2,500. There are different types of brokers. If you've never heard of those or you don't know, you can Google it, read about it, or email me if you have any questions. But in today's environment, in today's world, pretty much almost everybody out there has the possibility or the chance to trade. Again, you have to have money to open up an account to trade, but it's very accessible to many people now. It's not just for rich people to actively trade the market which it was really years and years and years and years ago, okay? So again, this is active trading is different than in long-term investing where you have to have the cash or you have the cash and very little margin. But when you're doing options, uh, you, are, you are in and you could hold it or you're out. You can day trade margins. When we're doing the day trading, okay, it is in a margin account. Again, usually four to one or 10 to one, all right? But my system can be traded with any size day trading account. You could risk $100 per trade. You could risk $1,000 per trade. You could risk $5,000 per trade. The, the amount of your risk should be in accordance with the size of your account for the cash, regardless of margin or where you're trading, okay? The most important thing, though, is learning the knowledge first, which allows you to take the risk so you make sense out of it and can be profitable and do well. You have all the time in the world to make a lot of money in the market. Again, it's just the beginning of the year. There's no reason to be heavy handed if you don't know what to do or you're new. I also don't trade penny stocks. I think they're junk um, and we don't do any low float crappy stocks that are worthless. Okay, most of the stocks we do are companies that you know, Facebook, Google, Amazon, BBBY, things that you would have heard of, okay? Here's a, here's a company you would have heard of, Six. Okay, so this was a trade last week. This was a day trade. So let's go over the gap. Stock closed here the night before around 43.50, boom. Open in the morning around what? $37. So the stock was gapping down. In the pre-market, I looked at the gap to determine if six would continue lower, in which case it would be a short, or if it was gonna rally, in which case either I wouldn't have done it or theoretically you could have gone long it. Anyways, I looked at the gap and I said, this is lower and it did drop. So it opened here around 37, low down here was around 35, 35.10 I think was the low. 35 was really the target of the day, went to 35.10. This was a short, I don't know what this is doing today. But anyways, here's the one minute chart, which really shows you the gap down. Stock closed here, gap down, boom. You could have shorted it out of the gate, got the drop. We ended up doing it a little later in here, right in this basic base. We shorted it, got the drop. And again, I squished these and made these bars really small. This is a one minute chart. This is a daily. So on the daily chart, I did I used my system in the pre-market to determine one, what stock I want to do, which in this case was six, 
or watch, and two, what direction to do it, which in this case here was a short. So this was, I was predicting it was lower, I was right. Then on the live day, I'm never in it in the pre-market in the morning and I'm not in it in the post-market at night. I'm waiting to determine to see if this is going to set up, which in case this did, this had a couple setups. And anyways, long story short, this was lower. So we shorted this, okay, on the setup after the live day. Here's the open, okay? Here was the trade. Entry was 35.58 on 4,000 shares, which is an advanced trader risk. I say that's an advanced risk, okay? Stop was 36.15. Remember, I always put the stop. Risk is 22.80. Exit at 36.15. This was a loss. So the first trade we did in six stopped. I'm going to go back and show you this here in a minute. We were in it down in here, snug as a bug in a rug. First trade in this was here. I didn't get this initial one here. I saw it late. We missed it. Anyways, I did it here, put the stop. I got stopped out. It ended up going to work. I'm going to show you the second trade of the money in it. But this trade stopped. But it was still good to use a stop here. Why? What if this would have failed? What if it would have ran all the way up here a dollar? Then I would have lost four grand. So it's okay that it got stopped. I thought it would immediately continue lower. It, I was wrong. It took about an hour or so to continue dropping. But I'm just showing you still the importance of putting the stop because if this had flipped, gone over the high, it would have went all the way up over 37 and it would have been a massive loss, okay? So again, you have to have parameters. So this trade stopped. Then we did something called a retake. Now, what is a retake? I stay on top of it. I still like six lower. I still really, really liked it. It was lower. Anyways, entry on the second trade, second setup, still in the morning, was $35.99. Shares was $5,000. Stop was $36.50. This is still a really good stop for this price point. Okay, about 50 cents or there, about 51 cents. Risk was $25.50. Then it hit again, same point. 5,000. Hit it again. I'll, show, I'll go back to the chart and show you this in a minute. Total shares 10,000. Again, price the same with the entry, with the retake. Exit 35.18. This was a big trade for two reasons. One, beautiful entry, good stop, and the size. So more than made up the difference for the initial stop and then still a profitable day. Now, what happened here? And again, I squished this because I wanted you to see. Here's where we did it right away. It took the stop. Then it banked out, then we shorted it, then we added a little bit more before the breakdown, got the drop. So this is a day trade short in six from January 10th. Okay, does everyone see that? So the first trade was stopped, the second trade was a win, and it was still a very, very profitable day. Any questions on that? Let's look at another one here. This was on Monday. So that was the 10th. This was Monday the 13th. Again, this is a gap down. Stock closed here, gap down, open dropped. This was EXAS. Stock closed here around 104 and change. Boom, open in the morning around 95. So I got up in the morning and I rated the gap to determine, one, if I wanted to do EXAS at all, and then two, to determine if it was a long or a short. So I determined it was a good gap and it was a short. So I was predicting this was lower and this ended up having a huge day. So what did it do? Stock closed here, this is a one minute, gap down, open, fell, boom. This hit almost immediately. Here's the first five minutes of the day in EXAS. High up here is around 95 and change. Low in here was around 90. Actually basically went down to where the low of the day was in the first five minutes of the day. This went to the dream target in 90. We captured this here. This moved so quick, so fast. Some people got it here in the, the second bar. Then some people got it here in the third bar. Either way, this is a beautiful move. And you could have redone it. You could have taken it again and redone it. Anyways, here was the first trade. 9269 entry, 1500 shares. Stop was 
Risk was 29.40. Boom. Exit on the bounce, 90.16. Profit, $3,795. And this was in less than five minutes. So it was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sell off that happened right out of the gate. My bias on this, based on reading the gap, was going to sell off. And then as soon as it, I saw it and it set up, boom, reacted. And this was even a late reaction, to be honest with you. But it was good enough. It was a big, fast $2 plus move immediately right out of the gate. And that is literally all you need. All you need on any given day. Okay. Now, again, this is an equity trade. This is a day trade. This is not an option. Although you could have done an option theoretically in this. You could have bought a put if you wanted to. I think this was a better day trade. I did not call a put in this. Okay. Any questions on that? So the point I was trying to make about reviewing some of the last uh, few trades is that not every trade works and not every trade has to work and you can still make good money. It is about odds. When I get up in the morning, I have a 26 point rating system that I use in the pre-market to choose the stocks I'm going to trade. And I look at the odds. If it's high odds, then we do it. If it's low odds, then we don't do it, okay? But even if I look at something, and even if I like it, like the six, the setup in that failed in the first trade, first trade stop. So again, you will have some trades that lose, but if you, if you keep your risk amount similar or close to similar in every trade, you're gonna be fine because you're gonna be profitable because some trades will end up being very big trades, number one, which was the second six was, and then number two, some trades will work immediately and go right away and be big trades like EXAS was. That did not stop at all. It was a huge move out of the gate and we got it. And you would have really had to be watching that stock and had to have seen it in the pre-market to get that move right out of the gate. And if you did, you could have made you know $3,700 and been done for the day by way before 10 o'clock. So I'm typically trying to look for that every day. And one of the reasons that I was saying that I prefer shorts is because short moves happen so quickly. Like, like today with the market, you have to wait sometimes for things to rally. You gotta wait for rallies. Any questions here? But for, for the most part, you can move forward and whether it's grow your account or make more money over time to pay yourself and increase your risk to step it up, you have to chunk it out. Because like if you have an account with say $5,000 in a profit account, you can't risk $2,000 in a trade. That would be ridiculous. You'd be risking almost half your account in a trade. That would be insane. And I know sometimes people do that. That's crazy. Now, if you did it in Tesla, you made out like a banshee. But that still would have been dumb. And you can't do things like that. So you chunk it out. You chunk it. So if you have a $5,000 account and you start out, you risk $200. You build the account up to $6,000. Then you can risk it, bump it up to $300 a trade. Then you bump it up to $7,000 you got in your account. Then you can bump it up to $400. Then you get $10,000 in the account. I mean to use to trade. And then you bump up your risk to $500. And I'm talking about a prop account. And that is how you do it. And it doesn't have to take that long. It really doesn't have to take that long. But, but, but you have to have the patience to go up the ladder and take the necessary st steps to get there. I know everybody wants to jump up and down and make a million dollars, not not today. People, everybody wants to make a million dollars yesterday and they wanna do it with no money and no risk. I, I always think that's hilarious. In fact, somebody emailed me a ridiculous question the other day and I said, I'm never surprised by the people, the questions that people ask. People really, I never shock me anymore about this, their expectations and what they expect. People literally expect to make a lot of money, risking nothing and, 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 and really doing nothing, like not using their brain whatsoever at all. You do have to use your brain. So what? What's wrong with that? Nothing, okay? Some of the most successful people in the world are people that have amazing brains. And I'm not saying that you want to, your goal in life is to go out there and be Jeff Bezos. But let me tell you something, that man has a good brain. Okay, so when you think about it, if your goals are very lofty, whatever they happen to be, okay, and lofty means could be different for things for different people, okay, whether it's time, whether it's with your starting capital, whatever, okay, it's not impossible, you can do it, but you have to think, you have to think, and you have to have the right knowledge, okay, the knowledge helps you. 
If you have a million dollars and not, if you don't have the right knowledge, you can lose it all. If you have the right knowledge and you have a thousand dollars, you could turn that thousand into a million. I don't know how long it will take you, but you could. It's unrealistic to think you could do that in a month. And that is part of the problem. I think a lot of people have completely unrealistic expectations within the time frame that they think they can achieve certain results and then they make poor choices in order to try to push the results along faster when it's not meeting the required time uh, uh, specifications. Okay. Any questions here so far? Anyways, let's talk about share size to make a living. If you risk a buck or a thousand shares, you're trying to get a move of a buck, two bucks, you know, every time I go in, I'm like, okay, well, I'm trying to get a move. I'm trying to get a dollar. I'm trying to get $2. And again, I'm talking in general. This isn't stocks like Amazon or Google, which we're not day trading, even though we do options and those things. In general, 50 cents a buck, okay? I'm trying to get things that move. But this is a nice job if you want to do it for a living because you can work from home. You can be anywhere in the world. And if you want to do options, like I said, you don't need a margin account. You can do it with a cash account. So what does that mean? Say, for example, you have a margin account. It costs $39 a share for the stock times 1,000 shares. Really, the cost of the position is 39000 to take it. That doesn't mean cash. It means cost. It doesn't mean you need 39000 cash. It means you need an account with that, that buying power of the thirty nine grand. So, for example, if you have a 4 to 1 margin account, you need 9750 if you have a 10 to 1 margin account, which you can get at proprietary day trading firms, you need 3,900. I'm just using this as an example to show you. Now, what if you wanted to buy the stock, this same stock, but you didn't have any of these things, and you said, well, I'm gonna do it as an option. Say you wanted to do EXAX as an option, which I didn't call, but you could have done it, all right? Say it cost a buck, okay? That would be a lot different. You'd get 10 contracts, which is basically like 1,000 shares, if it costs a dollar, you would need $1,000 cash, and you don't really necessarily worry about margin. So these are the pros and cons of doing options versus equity trading. I find the benefits of both. You have to look into it. If you have questions, call a broker, or you can email me later. Okay. Now let's talk very quickly here about the trade of the month. I don't think anything is going to top this. In fact, I'm certain that nothing will top this. This is going to be the trade of the month for the stock swish right here. I have a very good eye. Uh, I have a very good intuition. I've built that intuition and my eye and, and my instinct based on 12 years of doing the same thing. But it started out with the right knowledge on gaps. And over time now, I've just gained a sixth sense to do this. Is that something you can come and get from me? Yes, once you learn my system and start to do it and trade with me in the room Monday through Friday over time. How long will it take you? I don't know. Until then, you take the trades as I call them and you learn the class and you start to do it and you don't deviate from the system, which I don't do. Luckily, I ignore everything everyone says but myself. So the reality is that Tesla was higher way, way, way back here. I did do an option in this back here I called in October and then I just kind of let it be. Didn't really look at it, didn't do much with it, didn't call anything here in December. The stock was on the move. Then on this day here, just was, again, I saw it was going to gap up. This was on a Monday, it was January 6th. So I called the 450 and the 455 calls in Tesla expiring that week on the 10th. This was last Monday or whatever. It was more than a week ago now. And it worked. So I called it very late in the day because I saw the stock was getting bought and I saw it was gonna gap up and I was right. So this was the day I called the first two trades and then it gapped up over the strike. A lot of times I'll call these options trades, whether they're calls or puts, and they'll gap into the direction through the strike of the day that I call them. So theoretically, you could have got out in the morning with profit here. Now, if you held it, it had a move of the day here and a move of the day here, and I called more trades here and more trades here, and they all worked. So this was the big breakout day. Right in here, it was the 8th, I think. Anyway, stock almost made it to the dream target, which was 500 last week. It did eventually get to 500 this week, I'm not going to go over any of those, but if you did an advanced risk, of total risk of all the trades I called was $87,880. You could have made $336,720. And actually, some of you, you could have held even longer into the following week with the lift that it had. But anyways, average return on investment, 383%, which is fantastic. It was the timing of the trades that I called. It was, it was twofold. One, the momentum in the stock and the timing that I called these trades. 
I had perfect timing on these trades. I had absolutely perfect entries. I couldn't have done this any better if I tried unless I did it out in December. But the reality is the cost of these trades would have been more if we had bought them in December than they were in January if I did them for January expirations. So typically when I call trades, I call trades within a two week period. Could be the week of, could be two days away, could be two weeks. I typically do not want to take stuff far out. I don't think there's any benefit necessarily to doing that. Again, as an active trader, you're in and you're out and you're in and you're out. Um, I only have about 10 more minutes, so I'm going to try to go through this stuff really, really quickly. But again, I know this is being recorded, and if you have any questions, you can email me as well. Anyways, here was here was the Monday. So I called the 450s and the 455s, sent the trade out at 3 o'clock. The options newsletter, you get the trades emailed to you, okay? And again, cost on the Monday was six. So it was ran up. Beautiful trade. Sold at 42. 600% return investment. I showed you the chart. It ran straight up like a rocket. Then the 450s were very good as well. Okay. Again, straight up trade. Ran right up that week. Gapped up the next day after I called it. Then in the morning on the 7th, 9.42 a.m., I called the 460s. This was a good trade too, okay? That one ran up as well. I also called right away to the 470s. So typically what I do if I see something running, and I know, I'm like, I can see the momentum. It's gonna go here, it's gonna go here. So then I'm calling it. Call the 460s, call the 470s. This was a really good move from the cost. Cost of this was only $3.60. It was a 705% return investment. That was the 470s. Then I called the 475s, that was huge too. Again, I called them at noon or close to noon on Tuesday. Okay, that was, this is the second day. This is before the day it took off like a rocket, which was the eighth, okay? So the, I had perfect entries on these. Then again, on, I called around 1230, the 480s. And then I called in the afternoon, two o'clock, I called the 500s, which was insane, but it actually got there too, okay? And I called then the next day, I called I called as many as we could do. 485s, I called the 490s, and I called the 495s. This was Wednesday morning at 7.30 in the morning. I knew the stock would continue higher that day. And I'm just gonna go back and show you this chart really quickly. Um, so that was the morning of here. In the pre-market at 7.30, I knew this was gonna go, and it did. So again, I have a very, 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 very good eye for this. And it went. So people were short this, they shouldn't have been. People were short it last week, it broke out again. I called more trades. I don't think I have those in here. There just wasn't time. I'll do a video eventually on my YouTube with those other trades, but I called more trades on Monday in this Tesla. So Tesla just, everybody made a lot of money in it. One girl told me today she's up 70 some thousand dollars to start the year. I mean, it's just like ridiculous. But again, I had perfect entries on those. It was a perfect read of the chart. And again, when you see momentum, when you see institutional selling or you see institutional buying, when the knowledge tells you the trade is good, you set your risk accordingly, which would be based on the size of your account, and you take the trade and you let it play out. Some trades I call go right away as like those. Some trades I call are down before they go. It, it is what it is. I use the same system no matter what whether I'm doing longs or shorts or day trades or options, it's the same exact system, okay? Everybody that did the Tesla trades I called made money, went last week into this Monday, and now we're watching it here to see where it goes as well. But the point I'm trying to make is you may have big goals, but you can achieve them, but you gotta have the right knowledge. Like the woman that's happy that she made over 70 grand, she's astounded. She's been working on getting to that point, and now she's there. You, you don't you don't know you don't know when you're going to get to that point it's like but you know that you need to take the right steps to move forward to get to that point and too many people like i said at the beginning jump around from thing to thing to thing to thing what i do works the question is whether or not you want to come and be committed to learn from me because the cost of my class is not cheap my class is 69.99 it's seven thousand dollars if you want to learn what i know and if you just want to get the options trades it's six thousand dollars it's 59.99 for all the trades for a year so you're gonna pay a premium, you're gonna pay a good amount of money to get those trades. And if you wanna learn it, it's the best case scenario because what are you gonna do if 10 years from now, I'm not teaching people this anymore and I'm off running a hedge fund, which I've seriously considered doing, especially in the last two weeks, the way I've been calling the market and stocks like Tesla. Because you add about 
five more zeros onto those numbers is what people make that are, are that are running funds. The fact is that the market is moved by institutional money, whether it's selling or buying. And when traders try to do tricky, tricky, tricky things, they tend to lose. You may take 10 trades and make a lot of money in one and lose on the other nine trying to duplicate what you did because what you did really wasn't a good trade. The worst thing you can do is make money in a bad trade. People don't understand that, but I'm telling you, and BYND, I don't really have time to talk about that today. That's another tricky one. That's another one that people are going to get hurt in or have gotten hurt in. But anyways, I use one strategy to trade. I focus on gaps. We get gaps all the time of the year, but right now earnings season is upon us, so there's lots and lots of gaps. And I say to people, focus on right now what you can achieve. Live in the moment. If you want to make thousands of dollars, you can do it. But right now, is that possible? It is if you have the cash to risk and, and take my class and learn. So you have to look at where you're at right now. You will get there. Think positive about what you want to do. But pushing the envelope or believing in fairy tales like taking $500 and making 20 grand in a month is ridiculous. Once you get with reality and are focused on really, truly achieving your goals with reality, which doesn't mean you can't make a lot of money. You absolutely can. That can be your reality, even if you have a small amount to start. But you have to have the right knowledge. Without it, you're lost no matter what anyways. You're lost, like I said, even if you don't have a million dollars, you're lost without the right knowledge and the right guidance, okay? The knowledge gives you the conviction to take the risk and put on the trades, all right? So think about what I said today. Think about if you have time to do this. Think about if you want to trade full-time or do it part-time. Think about the things you did last year and the changes you're going to make for this year, but you absolutely can make money in the market if you want to. So I teach a class. It's called the Golden Gap Course. It's a rating system. It measures gaps by rating them in the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias to follow through for the entire day. Two, big move on the day, preferably. Early confirmation of the bias and the move between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Okay, precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward target potential, which is exactly what I did with Tesla. So you can do this if you want, if you're interested. When you get in good trades, the money comes quick and easy. When you're in bad trades, it doesn't. So you see the difference. And again, a lot of people just aren't focused on the right stuff. The Golden Gap system is a 26 point professional bearish gap rating system. And the purpose of my system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. You do this in the pre-market. <coughs> Excuse me. You do it in the pre-market. But I'm not taking any trades in the pre-market. You can't take options in the pre-market, one. And two, I'm not doing equity trades in the pre-market because they wouldn't be on, on four to one margin. Okay, they would be like, it would be like an entry like where you would just be taking the position uh, at, at either on two to one margin or on no margin. Okay, I'm not doing that. <laughs> this checklist, though, that I figure out in the morning tells me what to trade and in what direction. And it predicts the direction of bias in the stock. So really quickly, I'm going to go through the next class. If you want to learn, is January 25th and 26th. 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Cost of the class is $69.99. If you're interested, email me. I'm doing a special. Starts today through Monday for Martin Luther King. This is the trading room and the options letter free until the end of March which is basically the whole earnings season. You're going to get all the options trades, all the day trades, be in the live room. This offer ends on Martin Luther King Day. It's a special because normally you'd have to pay for the options letter and the room. This is a good deal, and it's a good time of the year because of earnings season. Um, someone's asking me, which broker? No, I'm saying you can't trade options before the pre-market. That's exactly what I said. You cannot. You cannot. So I'm doing the work to decide what I want. I call the trades in the pre-market. Everybody's ready to go and set up to take them into the open. Now, you can do the QQQs and the SPY as options, actually. I think it's 10 minutes uh, before the open and 10 minutes after the open. But no, I said you cannot. You cannot take options trades in the pre-market. I'm saying I'm not doing any trades in the pre-market, equity or otherwise. And actually, I don't get in the options in the in the queues or the spy in the pre-market, but you can actually enter those, I think, 10 minutes before the open and 10 minutes after the close. Is that clear? Any questions from anyone at all? And if you're interested in sitting in a trial to the room, email me today. I'll send it to you for tomorrow morning. We'll see what we get. We'll be watching Tesla. And we'll be watching the market. And I'll look at it right now. Info at thestockswish.com or Melissa at thestockswish.com. Any questions, anyone?
Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Melissa. It was a great presentation. Uh, member said, "Good stuff, Melissa." I can, I agree to that hundred <laughs> percent. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. Thanks for having a good, having me. It was great having you back. I hope you have a great the rest of your day and happy trading. You too.